Hey, this is Matt Simpson, the Beer Sommelier at the Craft Brewers Conference here for BrewPot.com. We're going to interview some of the best craft brewers in the entire world. Come on, let's go. Everyone's going to know, obviously, Jim Cook from Boston Brewing Company, Samuel Adams. Tell us about the origins of the company. Many people don't know, you know, the, the great and storied history of Boston Brewing. So tell uh, us how it started. Well, it's not that great or that storied. Uh, you know, it kind of started with my great, great, great grandfather who came over from Germany 150 years or so ago as a brewer. And every oldest son for six generations has been a brewmaster here in the United States. And I'm proud to say that my family has run 13 breweries here in that time and 12 of them went bankrupt and uh, the jury's still out on Sam Adams but I'm, I'm hoping we're gonna make it so we do have a long history but not so storied you know last night we got to taste a few of not only the new um, ones that are going to be on the shelf, the Imperial Series, but maybe tell us a little bit about something that you treated us to in your barrel room as well. Sure, because, you know, people do see uh, lots of different styles of Sam Adams, and I've, I've been brewing for 25 years, and I love making new beers, so we've got quite a collection of beers, many of which, you know, the average beer drinker doesn't see because we make them in small volumes or they you know they're just not a big enough brand to make it to the store shelves in most places they're only in the few special stores so you know we make small volumes of things like uh, the Imperial series it's a, we have an Imperial stout that run they all run about 10 percent alcohol so it's kind of three times the alcohol of Guinness uh, and uh, we make an Imperial White, we make our, our Double Bock, um, we make things like a Chocolate Bock at the brewery, I think you tasted our goods, we make uh, a, a Cherry Creek, a Cherry Lambic there, um, and then we've got other beers that we're experimenting with, uh, an All Noble Hop Pills, um, a sort of transcontinental hopped uh, IPA, and we're always making new beers. <laughs> What is the next big thing for Sam Adams? That's going to be the first question, and I'll lead it into what's your advice for the new folks who are just starting in the business? What's your biggest piece of advice that you would give them in order to perpetuate success from the ground up? Yeah. You know, we never had a next big thing. You know, our moving forward has always been a, a lot of little things that sometimes you know, become big things, but 15 or 20 years later, we're always trying to be at the forefront. So, you know, for example, we started doing seasonal beers over 20 years ago. And now seasonal beers are really big, but it took 20 years. You know, we did the first extreme beer 15 years ago, and now extreme beers are starting to, you know, hit the consumer's radar screen, but none of these started out as big things. I almost brought a 95 triple box to share with you, and I was afraid that I was going to get the same response. I, I talked to Garrett Oliver, and I brought an 03 Monster Ale. He's like, you know, we got cases going back to 98, just save them. I was going to bring it, and I was like, you must have lockers full of this stuff. Yeah, actually, we've got barrels full of it. But we actually blend some of that 15-year-old triple box into Utopias. So. Tell us about any special barrel conditioning or locations. I think I heard something about a barn across town or something or specific location. Tell us about how you're getting those beers started, how you got into the sour beers. And again, I noticed on the creek some amazingly natural cherry flavor came all the way through. Tell me all about that. Those cherries are these beautiful uh, black cherries. They originated in Hungary. Um, but they're now grown in Michigan, which is really one of the best places in the world to grow cherries. That's where we get the cherries for uh, our cherry wheat. And there we wanted a really bright, uh, you know, cherry, a real fruity cherry flavor. For uh, the creek, we wanted a darker, sort of earthier, uh, more wine-like uh, cherry flavor. So that's what you're tasting in these black cherries that come uh, from a different set of, of orchards uh, in Michigan. So for, uh, to me, this is just, I feel like Willy Wonka. You know, I'm in the chocolate factory, only I get beer. If you found yourself 
out of the beer business, what would be the next thing for you? You know, for me, that's sort of a very uh, theoretical question. I've never been out of the beer business. You know, I grew up around breweries with my dad. It's a so creative personality. Yeah, it's you know, very creative. You know, I know beer. I love beer, and there's to me, there's just so much to do as a brewer. So many new styles of beer that haven't been invented yet. And that's what's exciting to me. So, you know, what I'm thinking about is how do we create new occasions for beer, um, elevate beer, and show people how to use beer uh, in, in the occasions that they're currently using wine. Speaking of which, any new styles that you're working on now that we may want to know about? Oh, well, you saw, there's always half a dozen new beers in the tanks at our brewery. Now, you know, we roughly brew about 10 different beers for everyone that actually uh, gets introduced. We have very high standards. We don't want to do anything that's a copy of what somebody else is doing. We always want to do our own unique twist on any style that's out there. And hopefully we try to add something to what uh, this enormous range of very creative brewers is doing in the United States. We want to, you know, add something on top of that. 